Hello, my name is Brian Weir and I teach high school science, earth science mostly, um, for Snowflake High School. Um, this is my 20th year teaching and over the years I've come up with a few labs I really like and I'm starting to share those via YouTube um, or on my website educationalresource.org. Uh, it's a work in progress. Anyways, um, I lived in Argentina about 22 years ago and I was walking past this door one time in this building and I saw this pen fly past my head and almost hit me. I said, what the heck was that? And I heard a bunch of kids giggling. So I turn around the corner and I look out and there's a bunch of kids spinning a pen backwards with incredible skill and as they did that those pens would actually take lift and uh, fly and float and it was actually kind of fun to see and then when I taught elementary students I would do this with them and they had a blast and now that I teach high school it's still a blast to see kids flying pens uh, but how do I make it towards more scientific so what I have them do is I actually have them read the distances in the metric system I'm using a meter tape and converting it to millimeters and there's a whole lesson I do, it takes about two days, it teaches kids to use spreadsheets uh, to create calculations on those spreadsheets. So this part of that lesson, I just want to show you how to fly a pin in case you've never figured out. The record in my class is 6,500 millimeters or 6.5 meters. Um, and it's a blast. So what you're going to do is you first of all need a, an extremely smooth surface and all you're going to do is you're going to spin a pin backwards. And the way to do it is to just put it underneath two thumbs uh, and just pull back your thumbs, put a little pressure, pull back your thumbs and just fly. And it's a little bit hard. I've tried getting it to show up really good on the camera. I'm going to do the best I can for this video. But um, it's a little bit difficult simply because the pen is so small. So I've got a few different views to, to demonstrate to you. And you guys can figure it out. It's really easy to do. But I let my kids fly these things. They get three pens a, a piece. And they fly them and then they calculate their distances. I'm just trying to get one to fly straight at the camera because that would be sweet. And uh, I also teach a little bit of the Magnus effect because of this. If you watch Veritasium's film on the oh, Magnus effect, it's awesome. Where they fly a basketball down um, a canyon. He actually explains how they use the Magnus effect um, in real life. To solve problems, to be more efficient. So I'm going to try to fly the pen one more time, see if I can't shoot it straight at the camera. I tend to always go to my right when I do it. Um, but you'll be amazed at how many kids can fly these things quite well. And in fact, um, that one was pretty cool. And in fact, some kids will find out that they had a talent that they never realized existed. So it's pretty neat. So in order to perform the Magnus effect with a pen, what you really need is you need a hollow cylinder. Hollow cylinders will demonstrate the Magnus effect. Um, they have to be hollow. And so I have found that the big pens are what work the best. So all you're going to do is just take the, uh, the middle out, the ink out, there's usually a tip right here. You got to crack that off. Try not to damage the tip, and that'll get you a hollow cylinder. And as as far as I've ever done it, the big pens work the best. A couple methods are the double thumb method: spin it backwards as hard as you can. Okay. Um, I have students that do the two finger method. I don't like this one; it hurts. I've got students who have tried the six finger method. I don't like that one either. Um, and then here's the single thumb method. Um, if you have a kid that might have a disability, which I've had a couple in my classroom career, they just use a single thumb and believe it or not, a couple of them have actually um, gone further than the first round. 
So anyway, I do this lab once a year. Kids get to practice measuring um, distances and the metric system. It's a blast. I do it at the beginning of the year where kids get to know each other real well. Um, kids are laughing the whole time because some of these pens, they'll do loop-de-loops. They'll, they'll fly and hit a kid in the head. Not dangerous, by the way. Um, it's just been an absolute blast, and I call that the Flying Pen Lab. Want the entire lab? Go to educationalresource.org and you can download all the stuff I give the students, um, the in, all the instructions, and the lesson plan, plus all the labs I do in my class. Thank you.